Hi everyone, this is Nurse Anna from NurseStudy.net and today we're going to be speaking about coronary artery disease, otherwise known as CAD. This website is not intended to provide medical advice. The articles on this website are intended for entertainment or educational value only. While we strive to offer 100% accuracy, medical procedures are rapidly changing and laws vary greatly from location. Coronary artery disease, CAD, is a medical condition which involves damage to the major blood vessels that provide the heart with oxygen and nutrients. CAD is usually caused by cholesterol deposits called plaques that cause inflammation and narrowing of the coronary arteries. The buildup of plaque on the arterial walls narrow the coronary arteries, thereby decreasing the blood flow to the heart. When one of the arteries is completely blocked, person is most likely to experience a heart attack. The classic sign of CAD is chest pain called angina. Angina, which is pain or discomfort located in the middle or left side of the chest, the patient will describe a CAD angina as tight, crushing, or heavy. The patient may also verbalize like it feels like someone is standing on their chest or that there is a feeling of pressure. This may be triggered by emotional or physical stress. The pain may radiate to the neck, shoulder, back, arm, or jaw. Other signs of symptoms would be shortness of breath, tachycardia, hypertension, tachypnea, palpitation, nausea, especially in women, dizziness, sweating, and restlessness. Coronary artery disease starts when there is an injury or damage to the inner layer of the coronary arteries. Cholesterol-containing deposits, or plaques, clump at the site of damage. The medical term for plaque buildup is atherosclerosis. When there is a rupture or break in the plaque, platelets arrive at the injury site in an attempt to repair that part of the artery. The clump of platelets, called thrombus, may block the artery, causing an obstruction of blood flow. This eventually results in a myocardial infarction, MI, also known as a heart attack. There are several risk factors that may promote the buildup of plaque in the coronary artery. These include smoking, high blood pressure or hypertension, high cholesterol diet, sedentary lifestyle, diabetes, or insulin resistance. Now we're going to discuss some complications that can arise from CAD. One of them is arrhythmias. Abnormal heart rhythms, such as atrial fibrillation, may result from a decreased blood supply in the heart. Irregular heartbeats may result in the formation of more blood clots. These thrombi can travel to other parts of the body and become embolus or emboli. When the embolus reaches the brain, the patient may suffer a stroke. Another complication could be a myocardial infarction, heart attack, or acute coronary syndrome otherwise known as ACS. Total blockage of the coronary artery may result in the lack of blood flow to the cardiac muscle. Complication could be heart failure. Since the coronary arteries supply the heart with oxygen, the nutrient-rich blood, blockage in them may weaken the heart. This eventually leads to failure of the heart to supply blood to the rest of the body tissues. Now we'll move on to diagnostics. First thing would be blood tests, maybe a total lipid profile, fasting for 10 to 12 hours, and lipoprotein blood tests, non-fasting, to determine the risk for CAD. We'd also be looking at ECG and an echocardiogram to utilize sound waves to create images of the heart. Other diagnostics would include an exercise stress test, and this is the use of an EKG or ECG while the patient is on a treadmill or a stationary bike. This may also be used with an echo. Nuclear stress test is a more advanced version where a tracer is injected into the bloodstream for the cameras to create images. You could also see maybe having a cardiac catheterization, an angiogram, and even a cardiac CT scan. Now we're going to move on to treatments for CAD. First one being medications. The following drugs may be used to treat coronary artery disease as well as the accompanying chest pain, also called angina. Blood thinning agents such as aspirin will reduce the ability of the blood to clot so that the blood flows easier through these narrowed arteries. Nitrates to relax the blood vessels. Anti-cholesterol drugs, also known as statins, to reduce the deposits on the arterial walls. 
other medications would include beta blockers, and these would decrease the cardiac demand for oxygen by means of lowering the heart rate and blood pressure. Also, calcium channel blockers, they're so used in combination with beta blockers. Other treatments would include surgery. Surgical interventions are required if the medical team believes that an urgent and more aggressive treatment for CAD is needed. And these surgeries can include. Another surgery that we would consider is a coronary artery bypass surgery, or CABG, or cabbage is what we sometimes say. And that's the creation of a graft to reroute the blood flow away from diseased artery. Another one would be an angioplasty with stent placement, also known as percutaneous coronary revascularization, which involves the insertion of a catheter into the affected artery, followed by inflation of a balloon and insertion of a stent to keep the blood vessel open. Let's now move into some lifestyle changes that can be implemented. Smoking is one of the biggest risk factors of CAD. The nicotine in cigarettes facilitates the constriction of blood vessels, which then increases the cardiac workload. This eventually damages the lining of the coronary arteries as well as other blood vessels. Another lifestyle change is to commit to a low cholesterol, low sugar diet to control cholesterol and blood glucose levels. Foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids such as fish, soybeans, and flax seeds are recommended. Now let's talk about physical activity. Increasing physical activity by doing at least 150 minutes per week or about 20 minutes a day of moderate aerobic exercise will help promote an active lifestyle. Lastly, learning stress management techniques is helpful in lowering the risk of CAD. Lastly, some alternative medicines may help, including fish oil, flaxseed oil, canola oil, and soybean oil. Now let's go ahead and move on to a sample care plan. We have several care plans on nursestudy.net. You just go to the website, type in what you want to look up, and each article usually has two to four uh, care plans attached to it. So the first thing we would do is a nursing diagnosis for CAD, and it would be acute pain related to decreased myocardial blood flow as evidenced by pain score of 10 out of 10, verbalization of pressure-like squeezing chest pain, which we know is angina, guarding sign on the chest, blood pressure level of 180 over 90, a respiratory rate of 29 beats per minute, and restlessness. For the desired outcome, we would say the patient will demonstrate relief of pain as evidenced by a pain score of 0 out of 10, stable vital signs, and absence of restlessness. Intervention. Administer prescribed medications that alleviate the symptoms of angina. Rationale. Aspirin may be given to reduce the ability of the blood to clot so that the blood flows easier through the narrowed arteries. Nitrates may be given to relax the blood vessels. Other medications that help treat angina, including anti-cholesterol drugs, i.e. statins, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers. Intervention. Assess the patient's vital signs and characteristics of pain at least 30 minutes prior to the administration of medication. Rationale. To monitor effectiveness of medical treatment for the relief of angina, the time of monitoring of vital signs may depend on peak time of the drug administered. Intervention. Elevate the head of the bed if the patient is short of breath. Administer supplemental oxygen as prescribed. Discontinue if the O2 sat level is above the target range or is ordered by the physician. Rationale. To increase the oxygen level and achieve an O2 sat value of at least 94%. Intervention. Place the patient in complete bed rest during angina attacks. Educate the patient on stress management, deep breathing exercises, and relaxation techniques. Rationale. Stress causes a persistent increase in cortisol levels, which has been linked to people with cardiac issues. The effects of stress are likely to increase the myocardial workload. This concludes our lecture on CAD. Uh, please visit us at nursestudy.net where we have a ton of care plans, practice exams, study guides, and NCLEX review articles to help you guys get through nursing school. This is Nurse Anna wishing you a really happy weekend.